if something is going wrong with a certain species of wildlife, oftentimes it's trappers who recognize it first. I think folks should look at trapping as a management tool. The information that trappers and hunters provide us is invaluable. They are our eyes and ears all over the state. They're out there giving us information that we just couldn't get. That information has been crucial for Vermont to monitor fur bear populations basically since the 1960s, 1970s. When fur-bearing animals such as bobcat, otter, and fisher are trapped, there is mandatory submission of the carcasses to us at the time that they have those pelts tagged. We have very, very high compliance with having all of those carcasses turned in. That provides us with an abundance of information that we couldn't get otherwise. Nowhere else in North America does such a data set exist. Vermont has some of the best data sets, especially Fisher, in terms of long-term studies being conducted at, with these carcasses provided by trappers. We've been collaborating with other states throughout the Northeast, as well as with universities, to take tissue samples to determine, okay, are they exposed to rodenticides and to what extent? And from those results, we found out that in Vermont, as well as other states, that there is widespread exposure of rodenticides in fishers and bobcats. If they don't have the data, it becomes guesswork. If they don't have the data, they can no longer say anything with any kind of ability to be sure of what they're saying. It's a free service for us to learn so much about these species and to work on diseases and to learn about their ecology. With the numbers of beaver problems that we have, it could cost taxpayers tens of thousands of dollars and potentially hundreds of thousands of dollars to replace that voluntary service that trappers already provide. One of the biggest pieces of misinformation is that trapping reduces populations and that trapping is a threat to the future of these species. And that's simply not the case. We can always adjust what's allowed to be trapped based on population. Here in Vermont, we trap around the spiny soft-shelled turtle nesting areas. We use trapping to keep predators away from it so that this endangered species can successfully breed. Martin were extirpated, and then by using trapping, we were able to capture those species from Maine and New York and bring them back to Vermont, and now we have a population of Martin. We have populations of fisher that were not here. We have populations of beaver that were not here. The trapping community has worked with veterinarians to make sure that these traps are safe for animals that should not be caught in them. It is backed in science and it's based in data. Like we need to remember that, that there are professionals with doctorate degrees working on this to make sure it's safe for our community. In the last 20 years, $40 million has been spent on updating best management practices for trapping. The Fish and Wildlife Board was tasked by the legislature uh, last legislative session to modernize Vermont's trapping regulations. Using all this data collected by, I think, 300,000 trap nights over the course of 30 years, they developed a set of data that said certain traps are humane for the use on these certain species of animals. These are all regulations that are being considered right now by the Fish and Wildlife Board and then also by the Vermont legislature, which has to approve these rules. We will be the first state in the nation that will require BMP standards for trapping. The Vermont Trappers Association committed to best management practices long before it was ever required. The BMP processes that applied scientific management to the traps that we were using. The Vermont Trappers Association went to the state like 30 years ago and said, we want to outlaw traps with teeth. We do not feel that they're as humane and it was outlawed by the state of Vermont. The rules and regulations in Vermont are some of the most regulated in the trapping community. In turn, the individuals participating in that in Vermont are some of the most educated in the task that they're doing. Did you know that the Trappers Association was the one that uh, reached out to the Fish and Wildlife Department years ago and said that we need to have a trapper education course? I love no, that. It's mandatory for everybody to have a trapper's license. Not anyone can just go to a licensing class and become a trapper. Even in our trapping course, there are people that failed the class. That's honorable that they can say, look, I'm sorry. You didn't gather the information. You don't respect the information enough. No. Through our trapper education classes, including the advanced trapper's education class, 
which is really run by the Vermont Trappers Association. Some of that knowledge is really put out there for, for new trappers to learn the best methods available to them. There's a one bill to change trapping regulations to include best management practices. Before we could even get that through legislature, there are two more bills out to try to end trapping. It's very important that people on both sides of the issue pledge to disagree peacefully and to have these discussions like adults. When we only look at a single issue without putting it in context of broader economics, broader social dynamics, I think we really do a disservice to the conversation. I would try to discourage legislators from voting to ban trapping. If you have any questions, you should call the Fish and Wildlife Department. I would urge decision makers to look beyond the emotion of this topic. Take a second and look at the science and listen to these people who have dedicated their lives to wildlife management. Listen to your biologists. None of them want bad things for wildlife. They are a proponent of trapping because it's a strong tool.